How's it going traders investors? My name is Andrew Rader and today I got this question. They were asking about the RRG chart tool and if you guys have followed me for some time you know that I use that a lot. But why do I think this tool is so important and why should you use it? In this video I'm going to give a full breakdown of the RRG chart tool and some examples and how you can use it. There's some advanced concepts with it but I'm going to make it as easy as possible to understand. And if you wait towards the end I'll give you a cheat sheet that you can screenshot and walk away with. So what is the RRG chart and how can we use it as traders? Let's find out. This is the relative rotation graph or RRG chart. And what it shows is the shifts in momentum or the transferring of money between different assets and markets. And why this tool is important is it gives us an early signal into where money and strength is being rotated into or out of in the markets. It allows us to see an early sign and set an expectation of what a stock or sector is going to do. So first, let's break down this tool. A part of the RRG chart is broken up into four different quadrants, improving, leading, weakening and lagging. The name suggests what it's doing. This is an improving zone. This is leading the market zone. This is weakening and this is lagging the market zone. Up here at the top, we have the symbols that we're looking at, which are the sectors of the S&P 500 currently. Then we have our benchmark, which I have set to SPY. So when you see improving, it means it's improving relative to SPY. And like I said, I have the S&P 500 sector selected, but they have a multitude of different assets, commodities, and cryptos. Here's the time frame in which we can go back and look and scan for. So this goes back one year. And here's the different time frames in which you can look at the chart through. So now you have the basic layout. How do we actually read the chart itself? Now there's four main factors you want to consider when you're looking at this. The first one is how far away a stock is swinging from the center. So for example, on XLY or discretionaries, this is really far from the center. This shows us there's a stronger momentum and we're likely going to see a stronger rotation into the sector. The second factor we consider is the thickness of the line behind the ticker. The thicker the line, the stronger it's considered to be. So you can see, yes, a stock like XLF is improving, but look how thin that line is and look how close it is to the center. This is a big red flag for us and something we wouldn't really consider. The third factor is we want to see a swinging arc, something like XLU here or XLP and XLE. If you're able to kind of visualize where this is shooting off to, it's a good trajectory. But if you look at something like here on XLC, this isn't really convincing that this is going to go back into leading. And the final factor we consider while reading this tool is the location in which it's swinging. Ideally for longs, we want to see stocks entering this golden zone to the left here for long trade. We want to see it swinging from lagging into an improving for that early signal. And keep it in mind the distance from the center and the thickness of the line and the trajectory like I just talked about. And for short trades, the ideal zone is from leading down into weakening to catch something early. And what doesn't meet the criteria isn't useless, but something that we wouldn't really look into trading. Because short or long, there's not much opportunity here. And depending on what time frame, sometimes you'll get readings like this that is absolutely chaotic. If it looks ugly, the market probably is confused and the rotations are going to be choppy, so we wouldn't look to be trading. At least with any high conviction one way or the other. So now you know the basics of an RRG chart. You want to see things swinging into improving for that long trade. You want to see that thick line, that nice trajectory, and far from the center. And for shorts, we want to start seeing it coming from leading down into weakening, and we want to see the same thing. Thick lines, far from the sun, and good trajectory. Before we move on to how we actually apply this tool to the markets, it's also important to note that just because a stock or a sector starts to swing from improving to leading doesn't mean there's still not opportunity here. And same thing with shorts, it doesn't mean that this is out of the picture for us to take trades off. But what's important for us to recognize is stuff like XLU here, which is that clear trajectory, and this is an early signal. Typically when they're in that lagging and shooting right up into improving, this is still pretty early on in the rotation and you're likely to see more upside until leading. Now a lot of people like to use it for commodities and cryptos and they have a variety of different ways they look at it, but how I was taught and how I apply it and find success in the markets is by looking at the market sectors and industries. What this tool does a great job of is visualizing those rotations like we mentioned. And if you're able to pinpoint it on a certain broad sector or industry, you're able to find better trades and setups within it. So let me show you how I read the sectors and of course the list that I use to filter. So how do we pinpoint a trade and find an opportunity in the market? Well first you have to understand how the market is actually made up. You have to understand that the market sectors are a collection of individual stocks. And these different sectors are grouped into four groups. Your defensive sectors which are rotated into as a, as a precaution are XLU or utilities, XLP or consumer staples, and XLRE or real estate. Your more growth defensives, which are essentially a more offensive defense, so people are less cautionary, but they're still cautious. They will rotate into healthcare or XLV and XLE for energy. And the growth sectors in the market are considered XLK and XLY, which is your tech and discretionaries, and your XLC, which is your communications. And your final group is considered value stocks, which are XLI, 
XLF and XLB. So understanding these four groups, that there's a growth group, there's a growth defensive and a defensive and a value group. All of these each serve your purpose and you will learn more of this once you work with us in the Discord a little bit more. Okay, so let's see some examples for trades. Typically for day trades, you wanna use between the five and 15 minute, for swing trades, 30 to 60 minutes, and for macro analysis, the daily. Here's an example on how we can catch a swing trade on the 60 minute in a sector. The first thing you wanna do when you're looking at the sectors on this graph is you wanna notice the standouts. And right away what stands out to me is XLU over here and XLB over here. Some of the stuff in here seems indecisive and energy is kind of being violent. But XLU is showing some strength and we know this is a defensive stock. So coming off a big drop in the markets, defensives might start to get a rotation as people are essentially hedging their bets or cautious that it might go lower. And if they get into defensive stocks, they're gonna take less of a hit. So once we identify strength in the sector, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our chart groups here and we're gonna go down and select XLU. And so now we're looking at the holdings of that sector that was showing strength. And so once again, talking about all that we've seen, we want to look for the ones that are far away, thicker lines, showing a good trajectory, and are a standout. And since we're looking for a long trade on XLU, we want to look at the ones in this golden zone over here, coming from weakening into improving. And the standout to me is CEG, or Constellation Energy. And what you'll see is this setup right here is shown right here on CEG. Afterwards, we got the rally and we got the continuation in utilities. So this is giving us an earlier signal to a long trade here. So once you're able to pinpoint a sector, then pinpoint a stock, it would have been going and mapping out our levels on this chart. Now, before we get to current examples, what's also powerful about this tool is you can use it with the industries, not just the sectors, but the industries. And the same principles apply here, but this can help you ultra specify on specific targeted industries. We have a variety of custom lists you can use to analyze the markets, such as industries, sectors, and specific ETFs we monitor. As a lot of times playing these industries are uncontested, and a lot of times you can get some crazy returns. They're more smaller niche spaces, but once they get rotations, they boom. So everyone doesn't call this BS or a hindsight tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some possible trade ideas for March 7th and beyond. If you're watching this three, four, five weeks after this video, well, you can go back and look and see if I was right. So one future looking example we can look at as far as the sectors is communication. Now, as we mentioned before, we want to look for the standouts on this chart. And this is on the daily time frame, so it's going to take some time to play out. But would we look to long utilities, healthcare, and energy? Well, maybe energy, but healthcare and utilities is an absolute no. The trajectory is straight down and improving, and it's pretty close to that center. But what stands out to me is this XLC down here. And although it's in this lagging sector, it could give us an early signal down here into improving towards it that we can catch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up XLC and we're gonna go down to that daily time frame as well. Remember, XLC was still in that weakening, so we have to take what we're looking at with a grain of salt. What's gonna set up? We know these things can change very fast, so what we're starting to see is a big rotation start to swing down. So it's probably not time to long yet. And so it's not time to long anything yet, but typically a lot of the names like dish that get wrecked really hard start to swing around and get the first bounce another few stocks we're looking at is verizon and t-mobile these are telecommunication stocks and you wouldn't really know this unless if you traded but we have been eyeing these a while now. and this is where we'd pull up the chart and start to analyze our levels and where we could possibly look for a long trade and to reevaluate the momentum over here on stocks like verizon but do you see how this cuts your time for scanning instead of going for stocks like real estate or even names like xlf and wasting time trading those you're starting to get into the stocks with opportunity. Because with this tool, you're betting on continuations and you're betting on the fact that there's already a lot of momentum and momentum doesn't just come to a halt all of a sudden. So we'll be looking long for XLC over the next few weeks and hope for maybe a little bit lower and to see a little bit more structure here. Then we can start to pick up longs. And that's how you use the RG chart to scan and find trades a lot easier. On screen now is a cheat sheet that you can walk away with. Take a screenshot of this if you're on mobile. If you're on desktops, take a screenshot as well. And this will give you all the information and summarize this video. That's pretty much it, guys. There are some more advanced concepts with this, like understanding how and where money is flowed out of one sector and likely into another based off the relationship. However, we go more in depth with that in the Discord. And I'd love for you guys to come and hang out there. If you haven't subscribed already, it really help me out, guys, and keep you guys informed. Turn those notifications on so you don't miss these educational videos. Now I'm going to start a nightly trade plan for you guys to see the ideas and trades you need to take throughout the week and next day. So you don't want to miss that, guys. And, of course, I'll see you guys this week in the order books. Peace. I'm in line with the stars. I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf.